What's up y'all, welcome back to Fish the Moment. In this video, we're gonna be doing some more underwater testing. And this time, we're gonna be looking at how far baits move underwater based on how far you move your rod. So let's get into it. So as always guys, let me explain the concept for these videos. Basically, I am trying to test the conditions of fishing offshore, which means making a long cast in the deep water. So to do this, I'm using an Olympic sized swimming pool that's 13 feet deep and about 40 yards long. And so what I wanna do in this video is cast some different sized football jigs into the deep end of this pool and see how far they move when I move my rod from one position to another position. And so I tested for moving my rod from nine o'clock position to 10 o'clock position, nine o'clock to 12 o'clock, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock, all kinds of different positions, as well as hopping the bait and dragging the bait. And I tested some different size football jigs. I tried a quarter ounce football jig, a half ounce, and a three quarter ounce football jig, all with a Strike King Menace Grub trailer. And so different baits are going to move differently in the water, but I think this will at least give us a decent baseline and I throw football jigs all the time offshore, and so I think it's a good bait to start with. And in terms of the equipment I was using, I'm just throwing a seven foot four heavy action quantum smoke rod with 15 pound Seaguar Invisex fluorocarbon line and a Black Max Abu Garcia reel. And so that's basically the setup for this test. So without further ado, let's jump straight in the footage and show you how far these baits are moving. So let's start with the basics and show you how far the baits move based on how I change my rod position. And I tested a lot of different combinations to see what looked best underwater. So the first test I tried was putting my rod at the nine o'clock position as if you're looking at the face of a clock and moving it to the 10 o'clock position. This moved a half ounce football jig about a foot across the bottom. Then when I went from the nine o'clock position to the 11 o'clock position, it moved the jig about two to two and a half feet. And then when I moved the bait from the nine o'clock position all the way up to the 12 o'clock position, it moved the bait about six feet. And so it seemed like every time I went one more number up the clock, it moved the bait by a factor of like 1.5 to two times the amount. And that was pretty interesting because I didn't really think that would be the case. And it might just be that I'm moving the rod a lot further distance when I'm changing from nine o'clock to 12 o'clock versus nine o'clock to 10 o'clock because it's not perfectly precise. But I feel like I did a decent job at least trying to get the rod in the right position. And so that's what I found. It was very consistent across the tests. And I tried this with both the quarter ounce and the three quarter ounce jig as well. And I actually found that the distance that the bait moved did not change based on how heavy the jig was, which now when I think about it, it makes sense because I'm pulling the same amount of line, which should make all three baits move the exact same distance. What I did find though, is that when I was moving these baits through the water, the lighter jig would pop higher off the bottom when I would go from the nine o'clock to 10 o'clock position when I was throwing that quarter ounce football jig. And when I went to the three quarter ounce football jig and moved that rod from the nine o'clock to the 10 o'clock position, that bait stayed much closer to the bottom. And again, that makes sense because this three quarter ounce jig is a lot heavier than the quarter ounce jig. And so this is really interesting because I know that a lot of guys sometimes struggle to f feel the bottom and maintain bottom contact when fishing a football jig. And when I do on the water fishing lessons, one of the main reasons I see is because guys are throwing jigs there too light for the depth of wire they're fishing. A lot of times a quarter ounce jig will maintain bottom contact really well when you're fishing in, let's say less than seven or eight feet of water. But when you start getting out to 13 feet, 15 feet, 20 feet, every time you raise up that quarter ounce football jig, it's going to be popping pretty high off the bottom and you're not gonna be able to feel any brush or any rocks or down on the bottom because you're literally pulling that jig up and over all those rocks and you're not gonna feel anything. Where with the three quarter ounce football jig, that bait is going to stay on the bottom a lot better and you're gonna be able to feel any rocks or cover that are down there. And so whenever I recommend a bait for someone to start fishing offshore with, I always recommend a three quarter ounce football jig because of the weight of the bait, it'll keep it down the bottom and even if you lift your rod straight up or drag it to the side, which we'll see in a second, it maintains a lot better bottom contact, allowing you to feel what's down there a lot better. And so that three quarter ounce football head jig is a really, really good bait if you're trying to learn how to fish offshore and if you're trying to maintain bottom contact and struggling to feel what's down there. 
The next retrieve I tested is just a little three hop retrieve. This is what I use a lot when I'm fishing both my three quarter ounce football head jig and the quarter ounce football head jig up shallow. And what I found is that this three hop retrieve where I start the rod at the 10 o'clock position and kind of move it to the 11 o'clock position, move that bait somewhere between a foot and a half to three feet depending on how hard I jerk the bait. And it actually kept both the baits pretty close to the bottom, though again, that quarter ounce jig got a little bit higher off the bottom and the three quarter ounce jig stayed pretty close to the bottom. And so that three hop retrieve, I think looks really good because it gives the bait a little bit more erratic action. It makes that skirt flare a little bit more and makes those tails kick. And so I'd actually prefer that three hop method as opposed to a straight pull on that football jig whenever I'm trying to catch fish that are very active, let's say in the summertime or when I know those fish are actively feeding. But when those fish are a lot more lethargic, that slow, steady drag might be a little bit better. And I find it gets me a lot more bites on that football jig when I'm fishing in like the fall or the winter and that water temperature is really cold. The next retrieve I tested was dragging a football jig across the bottom of the pool by sweeping my rod to the side. And this is a retrieve I use when I'm trying to ensure that I'm maintaining bottom contact, especially when I'm throwing a football jig around like rocky spots or a rock pile, something where I need to make sure that I'm keeping that jig down in the rocks and kind of counting the rocks. That's what a lot of guys call this retrieve. It means you're feeling every single rock with this jig. And when I'm dragging my jig to the side, I like to try to vary up the retrieve from a one foot drag to a two foot drag and then a three foot drag and also that three hop retrieve. So I have several retrieves I try and I judge the distance of that drag based on how far my rod tip is moving out of the water and how far I'm pulling it. And what I realized is that I wasn't very good at judging distance using this technique. And basically on the one foot drag, I did a pretty good job. I moved that rod tip in my mind one foot and it moved the jig about a foot to a foot and a half underwater. But when we went to the two foot drag, when I moved that rod tip, what I thought was two feet, it actually pulled that jig three and a half to four feet underwater. And looking back at the footage, it seems like I was actually moving the rod tip more than two feet. And so in my mind, I knew what I thought I was doing, but it did not result in anything similar underwater. And when I went to a three foot drag, same story. I was actually dragging that bait probably more like six feet when I was trying to do a three foot drag. And I was also moving that rod tip about four or five, six feet. And so, one thing I realized from this is that I am probably overworking my jigs in a lot of situations because I'm moving the bait a lot further than I'm expecting. And obviously I catch a lot of good fish in a football jig, so it has worked, but I'm wondering now how often I'm overworking my football jig and moving it too far for the situation. Most of the time in the summertime, it doesn't matter too much if I'm moving that bait three feet, six feet or whatever, so those fish are aggressive. But in the winter time, I might need to start cutting it down to you know that one foot drag or maybe try to do like a one and a half foot drag, which really makes it about two feet and really train my mind to think that I need to cut all of my distances of my side swing of my rod in half to get my desired distance I'm pulling the bait. And so I found this super fascinating, something I didn't know after fishing football jigs for over 10 years, catching thousands of fish on them. And it's something that I'm definitely going to take with me when I go back to the lake. And probably the most interesting result from this whole test for me was the realization that the speed at which I sweep my rods to the side influences how high that bait goes off the bottom when I'm dragging that bait. And if you look at some of these tests, when I drag the bait at a pretty good pace, moving it pretty quickly, even with a three quarter ounce football jig, that bait will come up off the bottom. And it's not a huge distance off the bottom with a three quarter ounce jig, it might only come six inches off the bottom. But as you go down to the half ounce jig, when I'm dragging it, if I drag it really quickly, it'll pop that bait a foot to a foot and a half off the bottom and then it's even worse with the quarter ounce jig. And this is super interesting because if I'm trying to count rocks on the bottom and I'm dragging my football jig really quickly trying to cover water, I might be pulling that jig up over the top of all the rocks and then letting it fall back down and completely missing any sort of rocky cover that's down there. And so let's say I graph a rock pile or something down there and I'm dragging my jig. If I'm not feeling it, it might not be that I'm casting at the wrong spot. It might be that I'm dragging my jig too quickly, which is popping that jig off the bottom and then bringing it back down to the bottom and I'm just not feeling any of the cover.
And obviously throwing a heavier jig will help with that, but at the same time, you need to slow down your retrieve when you're trying to make sure that bait has bottom contact. Every time I was dragging that bait slowly to the side, all the football jigs stayed a lot closer to the bottom. And so with this half ounce football jig, you really have to slow that drag down, drag it very slowly, barely moving that rod to maintain bottom contact. And you, know, you can move it a little bit quicker with a three quarter ounce jig, but still keeping it slow and low is kind of what you need to do. Very, very slow drag with that rod tip. And that's really the biggest thing I took away from this video because I feel like I have been doing this wrong for years and it's something that I really need to be paying attention to when I go to the lake trying to drag a football jig offshore. I need to slow down how I'm dragging that bait and I need to move my rod less. This will probably result in a lot more strikes in certain times of the year. Now, in other times of the year, when those fish are super aggressive, they're schooled up on an area, I'm dragging that jig quickly or hopping the jig quickly, that's going to get those fish to react to the bait and it'll be falling and moving around and I think that'll actually be good for re getting fish to react to this football jig. But when those fish are a lot less active, when they're more lethargic in the late summertime and the dead of the winter, and I really wanna just keep that bait in front of the fish, I need to slow down, which again, it makes sense, but I didn't really realize how slowing down affect the action of my jig. And so it's definitely going to be good to know what my bait's doing underwater when I'm trying to catch fish offshore with a football jig. And one more retrieve I did try was that three hop retrieve and I was dragging the bait to the side. And this retrieve worked pretty well. Again, it hopped that bait further off the bottom when I moved it quicker, but when I was just hopping it real slow, three slow hops, it kept that bait in bottom contact pretty well and it looked pretty good. And so I still like that irregular three hop retrieve. It makes a skirt flare a little bit more, gives that bait a little bit extra action. And so I do like that. And so those are all the retrieves I tested at least in this trip to the pool. One thing I wish I had tested was actually stroking a football jig. I stroke a football jig a lot in the summertime and I just completely forgot to do that test. But hopefully the results I did get were helpful, at least as a baseline for you guys. And we'll show you what you might need to be doing with your football jigs when you're fishing offshore. And again, to repeat myself for about the 10th time, if you wanna maintain bottom contact, Stay away from your small quarter ounce football jigs. Go to your three quarter ounce football head jigs. This will make sure you're feeling all the cover on the bottom and work that bait slower than you're expecting and move your rod less than you're expecting. That's going to give you a lot better results. And so hopefully this video is helpful to you guys. Hopefully it opened your eyes to at least a few things about offshore jig fishing. And I plan to make more pool videos if you guys still enjoy these videos. I'm getting a little bit of a fall off on the views from these videos. So I may not continue to make them depending on on, you know the feedback and what I get from this video so if you do really want to keep this series going leave a like on the video leave some comments down below super easy to do and it'll ensure that I can keep doing these videos I may actually have to postpone a little bit because of all the craziness with coronavirus and all that really all I'm doing is going straight to my apartment editing at this computer and then I'm going to the lake and fishing and trying to stay away from as many people as possible and so if you do see me on the lake I know I've seen a lot of subscribers recently if I'm trying to keep my distance things like that I'm doing it just to protect myself and my loved ones who are elderly and so hope everyone's staying safe out there with all the craziness going on in the world and I plan on trying to make as many YouTube videos as I can for you guys so you have something to do while you're at home from work or just waiting to go fishing again so hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you all in the next one